Thanks for your interest in serving your community as a storm spotter. This training should give you the basic information you need to be able to safely observe storms, to correctly identify key features, and to make high quality reports. By this point in the training, we hope you have a pretty good understanding of the kinds of things you should be looking for when observing storms. And we hope you remember that safety is your number one concern above anything else. Now it's time to get into some of the details of what it takes to make a good report. For your report to be helpful and easy to understand, it should include some basic information, no matter what you're reporting. It's good to start by introducing yourself with your name, or if we're talking on amateur radio, with your call sign. Our office does not use or require spotter ID numbers, but if you're a member of a local spotter network, they may have specific guidelines on how you identify yourself. We need to know where you are, or if it's a delayed report, we, where you were when you made the observation. Keep it simple and use locations that are easy to find on a map. Tell us what you saw as briefly as possible, but with enough detail to make it clear what you're reporting. And one of the most important elements of a good report is the time of the event. Don't assume, for example, that we know that the hail you're reporting happened 30 minutes ago. Give us the most accurate time that you can, or tell us that it's occurring right now. Reports without good location information are not very helpful, and in some cases can create confusion that can make things even worse than having no information at all. We have to be able to find your location on a map based on your verbal description of where you are, so it's really important that you tell us where you are in clear, concise terms. It's usually best to reference streets, roads, or landmarks that are well known in your local community, but that are also easy for us to find on a map. Everyone in your town might know exactly where the old Smith house used to be before it burned down, but using that location in your spotter report won't help the weather service or anyone else who's not familiar with that spot. More spotters are using GPS and are able to give us latitude and longitude coordinates, and that's helpful as long as those coordinates are relayed with no errors. Also, depending on what you're reporting, there are two different locations we need. Every report needs the location where the event occurred, be it hail, wind, damage, or flooding. For tornadoes, funnel clouds, and wall clouds, we hope your position is not the exact same position where these are occurring. So in those cases, your report should include two locations. For example, I'm a spotter, I'm on Interstate 35 near exit 112, and I see a tornado about five miles to my northwest. As a spotter, your main goal is to serve your local community, so the system works best when you can give your report to your local emergency manager, warning point, police, or fire department. Now this is going to vary depending on the community, so be sure to contact your local emergency manager to learn the best way to submit your reports. Whatever system is set up in your community, it is most important that reports of damaging and life-threatening storms be passed on to community leaders as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's easier now than it's ever been to get your report to the National Weather Service. We answer our phones 24 hours a day, and we're never too busy to take your severe weather report. You can also reach us with an email, but you shouldn't use email to send us an urgent, time-sensitive report like a tornado or golf ball size hail, for example. Email is great for sending us images or more detailed storm reports after the storms are gone. In many locations, amateur radio operators are the backbone of the local storm spotter networks. We work closely with a variety of amateur radio organizations and individuals who volunteer their time and resources to help their communities deal with dangerous weather. We use amateur radio to communicate directly with our emergency management partners and to get information from local net control stations who gather and filter reports from their city or county. This map shows the various amateur radio repeater networks we use, and with the addition of new repeaters, the network continues to branch out and grow. It's easier now than it's ever been to get a license and get involved with your local amateur radio group. The American Radio Relay League website at arrl.org has details on how you can become an amateur radio operator. We also utilize the state of Oklahoma's 800 MHz radio network to communicate with various emergency management and public safety agencies. 
It's also quick and easy to send us a report online. Follow the link on our webpage, answer a few questions, and submit your report. Within a couple of minutes, the details of your report will pop up on the forecaster's computer screen. Forecasters need your reports as quickly as you can get them to us, but it is never too late to make a report. If you have a detailed storm summary you'd like to provide us in the minutes, hours, or even days after a severe weather event, you can submit those details on our webpage. Just look for the link to submit a storm report and fill out the form. Remember, the best, lo the best reports are going to specify the time, location, and the event and let us know who is making the report. The National Weather Service in Norman uses Facebook and Twitter to gather weather reports, pictures, and videos after the storms have ended. However, we do not continuously monitor social media during every severe weather event, so you should not use Facebook or Twitter to make real-time severe weather reports to the National Weather Service. Now, let's look at some specific information about what you should be reporting. It's not likely you'll ever have to report a tornado or developing tornado, but these are obviously high priority reports. Be sure you are not in danger before you even think about making a report. Remember to be as specific as possible and to provide both your location and an estimated location of the tornado funnel cloud or wall cloud. Describe exactly what you see. If you see a funnel cloud and buildings or trees make it impossible to tell if it's in contact with the ground, don't assume that it's a tornado. Report exactly what you see. Stay calm and be brief. It's much more likely that you'll be reporting these events since they happen somewhere in our area many, many times a year. According to the National Weather Service's definition, a severe thunderstorm produces hail one inch in diameter or bigger, winds of 58 miles an hour or higher, and or wind and hail damage. So if you experience any of these, we need to know about it. Flooding, especially if it's serious enough to cause a threat to life and property, should also be reported. Generally speaking, if it's bad enough to close roads, get close to homes and businesses, or cause vehicles to be stranded, it should be reported as quickly as possible. If you're a spotter in Oklahoma and North Texas, you'll probably be reporting hail more than anything else. The easiest way to report hail is to compare the size of the hailstones to common objects. Here's a list of common hail sizes we use in our office. There will be times when there's not an object on the list to describe the hail you're seeing, or when it's difficult to see exactly how large the hail is. In these cases, just give us your best estimate, even if it means reporting something like, it's bigger than a golf ball, but smaller than a baseball. Some spotters measure the hail, either with a ruler or a set of calipers. Of course, we'll gladly accept these measurements if you've got them, but it's not necessary. You'll notice we don't have marbles anywhere on the list. Marbles come in many different sizes, ranging from a half inch to over an inch in diameter, so don't make a report using the term marble size hail. Most of the time, you'll see lots of different sized hailstones, but we're mainly interested in the size of the largest hailstones you see. The spotter in this image is doing it right. He's staying inside and giving us a good eyeball estimate of the biggest hailstones. In this case, there are a few that stand out from the rest and are probably somewhere between golf ball and baseball size. That's a good report and tells us exactly what we need to know. It's very difficult for even experienced storm observers to estimate wind speeds in and around a thunderstorm. Most of the time, we will overestimate the wind speed. This chart gives some very basic tips for estimating how fast the wind is blowing, but these are still only estimates. Many spotters are using anemometers to measure wind speeds more precisely. Some of these devices can be held in your hand, while others can be mounted on your house or your vehicle. We'll gladly accept any wind report, whether it's estimated or measured. Just be sure to tell us which one it is. A wind damage report can be just as important as a wind measurement, even if the report comes after the storm has passed. We'd obviously like to know if a storm is producing damaging winds while it's still happening, but this isn't always possible. Wind damage could be anything from trees and large limbs blown down, power poles and lines damaged, or structures damaged or destroyed. Remember to report what you see, and unless you saw it happen, try to avoid speculating about whether damage was caused by a tornado or by straight line winds. 
A delayed damage report, even if it's minutes, hours, days, or weeks after the storm, can help us document what happened and allow us to verify our warnings and hopefully improve future warnings. Storm spotters often observe some amazing weather phenomena. If you get images or video while you're observing storms, we would love to see them. Images and video of the storm often help us determine whether or not a tornado occurred. Documentation of storm damage after the storm might be key evidence to help us determine a tornado intensity rating. And we rely on images and video from our local area to help us educate spotters and the public and to document severe weather events on our webpage. If you have something to share, you can use our spotter email address to send us an image or just give us a link to your webpage, blog, YouTube, or Facebook page. Remember to let us know if you're willing to give us permission to use your image or video.